welcome to Nicole on EQ, where we talk about ways to increase quality of life by improving relationship to self and to others. So if you're interested in that kind of content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. So today we're going to be talking about effective listening, and it sounds like the name, but why does it matter? Well, listening fosters trust, and trust is the foundation of many different relationships, not just romantic, to include work, family, friends, etc. It's also a crucial way of gaining new information and learning. Something like 80% of what we learn is through listening. Now you might be thinking, do I really need to learn how to listen better? Likely you do. <laughs> Probably know all the basics of body language, eye contact, head nodding, and audible affirmations such as mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But as fascinating as the human mind is, it tends to wander and quite frequently. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Up, but there's this lovely, lovely character named Doug who's a golden retriever, and pretty much every time he's in conversation with someone, every five seconds he gets distracted and says, Squirrel! And that's pretty much what the brain does in any given moment. Just to test this theory out, I want you to count the amount of times your mind squirrels when I tell you about my weekend last weekend. So two weekends ago, I had Friday off. At my work, we have three summer Fridays where we get to sprinkle throughout the summer and take off whenever, which was really nice because it coincided with one of my Vegas friends coming up to Seattle where I live and we got to meet up. I met up with her at the Capitol Hill area and the original plan was to get vegan ice cream, but that was next when we saw this new boba shop across the street from the tattoo parlor that her brother was getting some work done. I believe I got like, yeah, I got a mango matcha. It was really good. There were mango bits and boba in there. Really delicious. And then from there, we went to the nearest drugstore so that we could get some snacks and some sunscreen because from there, we went to Gasworks Park, which oversees the Seattle skyline, so that was really pretty. And then we went to the Arboretum, where we found a nice takeoff point for our inflatable rafts. So I had a kayak and she borrowed her brother's stand-up paddleboard. And from there, we were on the water for about 30 minutes. We didn't venture too far off the Arboretum Trail because there were many boats out that day because it's a very nice day. And my friend wasn't too comfortable going out on super choppy waters on the paddle board, so that was fine with me. And then from there, we met up with her brother who was done with his tattoo appointment to get some veggie grill, and that was really delicious. And it just so happened that the veggie grill was next to a Frankie and Joe's, which was the vegan ice cream shop we were supposed to go to earlier, so it just ended up working out that way. It was like it was destined for us to get some vegan ice cream. And then from there, we went our separate ways, and I haven't seen them for two years. The last time I saw them was in Vegas, both of them. So it was really nice to have a little reunion, known each other in three different states, Washington, Nevada, and Hawaii. So really cool seeing those two, and I had a really great day with them. So that was about maybe like a one to two minute story, and chances are your mind probably squirreled, I want to say five to ten times. So this is just to illustrate the point that our minds are constantly going, so whenever we hear one thing, we're often likely bound to think of another thing that's connected to that and will stray us away from paying attention to what's actually going on in front of us. Oftentimes when we're listening, we're not listening to comprehend or to understand, but rather to respond. If you think of the different types of squirrels that you had during my story, it is likely that it fell into one of these categories. So maybe it was to agree or disagree. For example, you might have thought that paddle boarding on open waters is absolutely okay. Another thing you could have done was ask irrelevant questions. So with this specific example, with my day with my friends, you could have asked, well, what junk store did you go to? Which isn't super relevant to the story that I'm trying to tell. Another thing we like to do is give advice. So with this instance, you might have picked up from the places that we decided to eat that I am plant-based. And for whatever reason, people tend to be very opinionated about that. And maybe you thought of some words of advice, nutritional advice, in regards to the vegan diet. And other times we'll apply our own examples to the story. So when I mentioned Vegas, when I mentioned Seattle or Hawaii, you could have been like, oh, I've been there. Oh, Vegas? 
great time. Hawaii, very relaxing vacation that I had that one time. So just some examples on how our mind tends to squirrel. With that in mind, try to be cognizant of what one or two types your mind tends to squirrel to, and that will be very helpful with getting better with effective listening moving forward. So instead of listening to respond, we can try this instead. So we're gonna switch gears and talk about a different example here. So if you watched my last video, I had a pretty shit week last week. <laughs> the big reason for that was it was relationship related because there were, there was jealousy involved. So I was jealous and I was coming to my boyfriend about it to talk to him about it. And after some time, we got to talking about it effectively, but that was not the case at the very beginning. There was a lot of back and forth and a lot of arguing, a lot of miscommunications. So during this time, my goal was to come to him so that I could talk about what I was feeling and to come up with a solution for it. But it wasn't taken that way. It was kind of taken as an attack or complain or like holding on to a negative experience that we couldn't change. In retrospect, looking back at that really fresh example, instead of letting your mind squirrel, instead, here are a few techniques that you can use to apply better effective listening within your relationships. Being mindful not to interrupt and letting that person finish before you actually say your piece in your own lens, coming from your own world, you go through a few steps to clarify. So the first is to ask clarifying questions. So with my personal example, I came to him being like, hey, I'm jealous because of this. And God, this is hard to talk about, but I'm human, so it's natural. One way that he could have responded using effective listening is ask, well, what is it about this behavior that makes you feel jealous? Specifically, what is it? What does me doing this tell you? What does that make you think? The second would be to ask what the end goal is here. So I mentioned earlier that it was coming across as, a, as an attack, as a holding on to a negative event that he couldn't change. When if the question was asked, what is the end goal of this? I would have realized how my speech was coming across and would be able to better explain that the goal of this is to express how I'm feeling and to also come to a consensus on how we're gonna move forward and be better about it next time. And the third thing to do before applying it in your own lens is to ask if there are any other details or any other information that I would like to disclose. And then from there, you can ask if it's okay to whatever your squirrel is, to agree or disagree, to apply advice, to um, empathize or apply your own examples. There's this really great catcher's analogy that really drives home the effective listening point. And this really applies to any sort of sport that involves throwing and catching balls. Um, I know sports. Sports! So you can't throw the ball until you fully received it. In this instance, you can't communicate your point until you fully received what that person is trying to tell you. So in sum, by listening more effectively, we increase our capacity to learn about the world around us, whether it's knowledge at work or at school or about the relationships that are in our lives. Hopefully you found the tips of effective listening helpful. And if you do, would very much appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any future videos. So with that, I'll see you all next time.